Do you need some sunless tanning tips? Huh? <laughs> do you need some sunless tanning tips? Yeah, what do you think, Gracie? What do you think? Hello there, welcome to part two of 2024 sunless tanning videos. If you missed part one, I'll link it down below. I tested out eight new sunless tanners this year, but I will also list and link the previous year's videos because every year I test out a bunch of new sunless tanners. So if you're on the hunt for your perfect sunless tanner, those videos may be helpful. But in today's video, I just wanted to focus this on, I think I've got roughly 10 tips here to help you not only be successful in your sunless tanning, but to help you fall in love with it. Because I get strange reactions from people when I mention sunless tanning. I think everybody at some point has had that experience where their skin turned orange or it was really patchy or it smelled horrible or something. And it can make or break your experience going forward. So I wanna give you some of those tips that I feel like are essential to helping you be successful and to love sunless tanning. Now, there is nothing wrong with embracing your natural skin tone, color, pale, dark, whatever it is. But for me personally, I just feel a little more confident in the skin I'm in, especially when I'm wearing sleeveless tops or shorts or dresses through the summer, if I have a little bit of color. And my days of tanning out in the sun were ended by my dermatologist a number of years ago. So I don't go out and sunbathe. I wear a lot of sunscreen, but this is a much more healthy way to get some color and to, again, feel confident in my summer clothes. So whether you're a pro at sunless tanning or you've been frustrated or you're a newbie and you're scared, this hopefully will be a very helpful video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. Number one is you're going to choose the formula of sunless tanner that suits your style of sunless tanning. Decide whether you're gonna be a nighttime sunless tanner or a daytime sunless tanner and choose a formula that corresponds with that. So if you are somebody who wants to be a nighttime sunless tanner, you are not going to want to choose something like this that has a super strong guide color because it's going to transfer all over your sheets and you're going to be really upset in the morning. <laughs> that is not going to make for a pleasant experience. Instead, something that may be more helpful is a clear sunless tanner like this one or something that has a minimal guide color like this that does not transfer onto your sheets and gets all over your pajamas and everything. So that would be the first thing to consider. If you're gonna be a daytime sunless tanner, Again, you're gonna decide whether it's daytime stay at home kind of sunless tanning. If so, then this could work for you. But if you're daytime go to work, be out in public, again, guide color is going to be key. So you don't wanna go with something that is super unnatural looking as you're out and about. You may again choose a clear sunless tanner or something again that has a really nice kind of natural guide color that's light and is not going to be noticeably strange as you're going throughout your day. Next, Next would be depth of color. Now, I always thought, okay, well, wouldn't you want the most depth of color? They go for the ultra dark. If there's, you know, medium, deep, ultra dark, don't you want ultra dark? Not necessarily. If you are super fair skin tone, you probably don't want to go for something that is ultra dark because it can look very unnatural. Not necessarily orange. I feel like in general, sunless tanners, at least ones I've tried, they've, they've solved the problem of turning our skin orange. However, the level of depth of color can look really unnatural if you go too far. Now, if you try one and you feel like you could go a little bit darker, try doing a double coat with it, apply it 30 minutes to two hours later after the first coat and see if that gives you the proper level of depth of color that you desire. Next would be the scent. If you're somebody who cares at all about the scent of things, this can make or break your experience as well. And Thankfully, there are enough options on the market today that smell delightful, that there is no need to have to sacrifice and go around smelling like DHA. 
So if scent is a big thing to you, and I hear from most people about sunless tanner, most people are afraid of that horrible sunless tanning scent. There are lots and lots that have really good coconut scents or even kind of a fruity, florally scent, something like this, the pineapple coconut. So scent is another big factor in loving the sunless tanning experience. Next, you want to plan your sunless tanning outfit. Now that sounds a little bizarre and crazy, but I'm telling you, it's a thing. First off, your outfit needs to be loose fitting and not something that is going to cut into your sunless tan as it's developing through the day. So you don't want to put sunless tanner on and then put on skinny jeans or leggings, something that is super tight because you might end up with a seam down the side of your leg. Nobody wants that. Also for your sleeves, your arms, you don't have to wear sleeveless, but wear something that maybe has maybe a loose fitting sleeve or you can do long sleeve, but again, make sure it's loose fitting, not constricting, and that will allow your sunless tanner to develop unhindered and without any crazy weird lines the next day. But something else I let put in this category is you wanna choose something that's cute as well. So I typically do my sunless tanning at home, but I like to have something that's cute enough. If I have to dash off to the store or to our lodge or something, I don't feel strange doing it. And I don't feel like, oh, I need to change my clothes. So I'll pop up on the screen. One of my new favorite things that I found this summer, it's a pants suit. It's super comfy from Amazon. It's lightweight. It's comfy. The sleeves give a little bit of coverage over the shoulder, but they're loose fitting. And this is something you could easily throw on a cardigan if you get cold or chilly or just kind of makes it look like an outfit. So again, choose that outfit. Have a tanning outfit. If you're going to work, just try and choose an outfit that's a little flowier, a little looser, so it can allow your sunless tanner to properly develop. Next thing to consider is how often do you want to do sunless tanning? Is this something that you say, okay, once the summer hits, I want to be tan all summer long. If that's you, that's me, then you want to look at your week, look at your schedule and say, what would be a good day of the week or night to do the sunless tanning and schedule it? Because when it's scheduled, you get into a routine and all of the steps to do it, it just flows and you don't really even have to think about it. If it's kind of like, oh no, I need to be tan tomorrow and it's three o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to be blaming the sunless tanner for not developing fast enough or you're going to be scrambling trying to figure out how you can get it on and be tan. So look at your schedule, look ahead, decide if you're going to be kind of a all summer long, or if you're gonna be kind of a, well, I just wanna be tan on vacation, I wanna be tan for this event or that event, then make sure that you test out your sunless tanner, know exactly how long it takes for your tan color to develop, and plan accordingly. Now, something that I do because I'm a weekly tanner is I look at my schedule and I say, now when uh, throughout the week do I wanna be the darkest tan and when is it okay if it's kind of fading? Because if you tan on Monday, you're gonna be the tannest on Tuesday. If you tan on Saturday, you're gonna be the tannest on Sunday. So just a couple of things like that to keep in mind to help you enjoy the process and be able to kind of regulate your tan throughout the summer if you so choose. Now let's get into application. The most important thing, and you hear everybody talk about this, is exfoliate the skin. Now, I've heard people, and I was one myself, who used to think just using a loofah, you know, those fluffy loofahs, like that that was enough exfoliating. No, no, no. I even used to do a sugar scrub on my body, which was helpful, but once I discovered the tan remover mitt, this was a game changer. This one is one from Tanceuticals, but I have also used a couple from St. Tropez. There's also does a great job. This one from Tanceuticals has actually lasted me the longest. I have had this for, I think I'm going on my third season with this. Now, when you get one of these, they're inexpensive and you're gonna think, what is this gonna do? Because it is just a fabric. But you get this wet and you add a little bit of your normal body wash 
and you go to town and scrub your skin and oh my goodness, tan remover mint. It has that name for a reason. It will actually remove your sunless tanner. So this is especially critical at the end of your tanning week when you're gonna reapply, you wanna make sure you get every bit of the remaining tan off so that you can start fresh. But also you want to make sure you've removed as many dead skin cells as possible because your cells are constantly turning over. And if you put sunless tanner on to unexfoliated skin, those dead skin cells are gonna be flaking off along with your sunless tanner and it's not going to last as long. It's not gonna look as pretty. So just get yourself a tan remover mitt. You're gonna be so glad that you did. Next goes with how you make your hands and your feet look nice and natural and even with your sunless tanner. The secret is a good old makeup brush. I now have two of these, but I've had these for years. These are from e.l.f. and it's the Buffing Foundation Brush. This is an inexpensive brush that has dense fibers. It's round and something like this is what you need to look for. So all you're gonna do, and I do have a video showing me do this, but you're gonna put about half a pump of your favorite sunless tanner on this and you're going to work it all into your hands. You're gonna bend your fingers, work it into the crevices in between the fingers, and then you're also going to work it around the edge of your hand. You're not gonna actually put it here in the center of your palm of your hand. That would be a little crazy, but you're gonna just kind of do a nice fade. And by doing that, it allows you to get the most even application on your hands. But then what is really important is you're going to actually wash your hands after 30 to 45 minutes. Now I got this question. They said, well, what about the hands? Like, can you wash your hands all day if you're doing sunless tanner? Yes, you can. On your hands and you'll notice on your feet. Now I don't rinse off my feet. You could if your feet get too dark, but you will notice that the skin on your hands and your feet grabs sunless tanner super fast. So you only need to leave your sunless tanner on for about 30 minutes, then you're gonna rinse, wash your hands, and you can continue to wash your hands throughout the day and the color will develop. By the next day, you will have tan hands like this. So you don't have to go around not washing your hands all day, but you definitely want to apply sunless tanner to your hands. Otherwise, you're gonna have this odd mark demarcation right here at the end of your wrist, and that is not going to look natural. Next tip is for those of you like me who have some age spots. Now I have one on my hand that I'm just lazy and I don't remove the sunless tanner, but age spots that develop color when I put sunless tanner on them. There's one here, I have one on my chest, I have a couple on my legs, and all I do is just take a Q-tip with some water right after I've applied sunless tanner and just remove the sunless tanner from those spots. That will help prevent your age spots from developing too much color with your sunless tanner. Now next is how do you apply sunless tanner to your back? I get this question all the time and honestly, I don't do it. I don't apply it to my back all the time. I only do it if I know I'm gonna be going to the pool or to the beach that week, or like when I had to perform at the piano concert, my dress had a slight V, and so I couldn't quite reach that part of my back. So they have made this wonderful invention called a back applicator, and this one's by Coco and Eve. I've had this for a couple years. It's nice and soft. It's the same material as your tanning mitt is. And you just apply a little bit here and then you use these elastic straps here on your back. Again, I do have a video showing me apply this and you work it across your back. This is also bonus. You can use this to apply lotion to your back. So if you're somebody who gets itchy and dry in your back and you can't get lotion, try a back applicator. Now, along with the back applicator, the using an applicator for the rest of your body is crucial to getting a nice even tone all over. So not only is it gonna help you be successful, but it's going to help you love sunless tanning because you're gonna love the way it looks. Now I have two that I use kind of in rotation. This one again from Coco and Eve, it just depends on if you prefer one with a thumb. It's kind of nice, gives you good control. But I personally actually, one of my favorites is this one and it's from Skinner Rolls. It's from Amazon, it came, it came in a set. This has a little tighter band here, but it does help keep it on your hand and you can get just 
really nice, even distribution of product. And the weird thing is I feel like this one works even better on sunless tanners that dry real quickly. This one doesn't seem to absorb as much of the product as some of the other sunless tanning mitts. But using a sunless tanning mitt and your back applicator, that is going to help you get the most even tan and most importantly, keep it off of your hands because you don't want your hands turning orange. The last and final tip I have for you is that you need to moisturize deeply every single day after you have applied sunless tanner. I feel like sunless tanners have come a long way from when I first started and I no longer feel that I need to apply any moisturizer before sunless tanner. All of the ones that I've tested this year, they provide, they have a built-in moisture content themselves. So you apply them to clean, fresh, exfoliated skin. But after, the next day, after you've showered and the days that follow, it's really important to hydrate your skin. Again, it's going back to those dead cells. We wanna prevent our skin from getting dry and flaky. And my favorite go-tos for the last six months, seven months have been this one from Tree Hut, especially the watermelon scent. Oh my goodness, it's so delicious. So the moisturizing body lotion, they recently came out with this one and they do, I think, still have the body butter. I used the body butter, but now I like this one because I think it smells even better, but it's a nice thick moisturizer. But I use half of this and then I use half of a lighter weight moisturizer because I feel like on its own, body butter or something like this is just too much. So I mix it with a lighter weight moisturizer. This is the Soap and Glory Call of the Fruity. I also like the Coca Colada. The two of these combined every day after I've showered really has helped the longevity of my sunless tanner. So I hope that these tips helped you, whether you are new to sunless tanning and afraid to do it, or you've just had some frustrating experiences in the past. I hope that these tips will help you. I also like to include just this little encouragement at the end of sunless tanning videos that your sunless tan does not have to be perfect every week. I mean, a natural tan is not ever perfect. I don't know about you, but back in my days when I was getting a natural tan, I always had, you know, strap lines. I would have lines on my feet from my flip flops or my sandals or your short lines. So no tan is ever like completely perfect. So give yourself some grace. If you end up with an odd little streak one day or one week, it's okay. Just pull out your remover mitt after a couple days, scrub it off, start all over, it'll be fine. But sunless tan, Again, if you find the right formulation for you and the right color and you give it a little practice, I think it's something that you can just fall in love with. And hopefully these tips will help you do that. Thank you as always so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.